Are we about to enter a period of hyperinflation? There are definitely signs that we might. And in this video, I'm going to show you scenarios of countries and regions that actually went into hyperinflation. And the US government is cooking up a clever plan to prevent hyperinflation by taking your Bitcoin. So what do I mean with all of this? Well, as usual, I have prepared a bunch of really interesting charts, tweets, and news updates, which I'm going to share with you to back all of this up so that you have a better understanding of everything that's going on in the market. And if you like to watch videos like this one, make sure to hit the like button. It will really greatly support my channel. And if you want to see more videos like this one, I'm going to be posting regular videos throughout this crypto market cycle. Then make sure to subscribe to my channel as well. Now, let's get in, guys. Um, let me share my screen right away. So the first post that I want to show you is the one from uh, Fred Kruger. Uh, that's his uh, Twitter handle. Um, so he is saying when hyperinflation hits, it hits quick. The Weimar Republic. So for those of you that don't know what it is, that's basically the name that we give to uh, basically Germany around the 1920s. Um, it took only two years for the Weimar Republic to go into hyperinflation. So this was, I believe, right after the First World War. Um, and hyperinflation hit the Weimar Republic very, very, very quickly. Um, and then Zimbabwe, which was very recently. This is a chart that we see here from Zimbabwe. This was in 2007, 2008. Here you see the chart of their inflation. Uh, you see the blue line, which shows their inflation. And then from the 2000s onwards, we see uh, inflation rates of 100%, 1,000%, all the way up to a billion percent or, or more. Um, so when hyperinflation hits, it hits quick. That is the whole point of this tweet that I want to show you. And uh, this is something that really happens, and it happens still in this day and age. Um, and why is, it, why is this important? Well... Right now, the U.S. government is printing trillions to sustain its national debt, its public debt. Here you see uh, another tweet, and it has a really great insightful quote. Uh, James Lefish says, Then it comes to be that the soothing light at the end of your tunnel was just a freight train coming your way. Or in other words, it's going to hit you hard. So whatever you thought was going to be your entry out of a bad situation is actually going to be an even worse situation because when the train hits you, you're probably going to die. So when we look at this US debt clock and we see that the national debt, literally you're, you're blinking your eyes and like hundreds of thousands and millions are added in just a matter of seconds and, and minutes. So is that a sustainable system? Does this chart look healthy where a, a country's debt is only going up and up and up and they need to print more and more money in order to uh, keep the economy afloat? Does that sound healthy to you? Because if you read books from Ray Dalio, for example, uh, where he talks about the cycles of world powers and how every empire falls through massive hyperinflation at the end. For example, the Roman Empire, the Dutch Empire, the British Empire, all of those were very mighty empires, but all of those came to an end because they started to print excessive amounts of money leading to hyperinflation. And now we are seeing signs that this might happen again. And if you're familiar with the book, The Fourth Turning, this was a book written which actually predicted all of the events happening in the world today. The COVID-19 pandemic, uh, uh, this conflict in Ukraine, the conflict in Israel. Um, also, right now, all of the money printing that's going on, the shifting of global powers. So all of that is happening in front of our eyes right now. And another sign of the end of a world power is that the government starts to tax the rich tax the wealthy of a country. And that is something that we might see happening right in front of our eyes as well. Because the Harris administration, so if you don't know what's going on in the world right now, if you've been living under a rock, 
uh, we are approaching the U.S. presidential elections where Kamala Harris is basically competing with Donald Trump for the presidency. And right now, uh, both parties are slowly announcing their standpoints on certain topics and industries. And the Harris administration is basically proposing a 44.6% capital gains tax um, also on Bitcoin. So that means that they're going to take 44% uh, of all of your profits, meaning that you are taking all of the risks. You No, let's take a step back. You are working hard for a few years to build up some capital. And now at this point, you're able to make some really nice investments. And if you've been investing well, because maybe you found some asymmetrical investments like Bitcoin, then they want to put a 44.6% capital gains tax um, to take your profit, okay? And why do they want to do this? Well, there is a massive hole in their balance sheet. And the only way to fill up that hole is to either tax their residents or print more money. So now they're trying to devise plans in order to take more of your money. 45% um, capital gains tax. Kamala Harris proposes 45% long-term capital gains tax which is the highest capital gains tax since 1922. This is one out of the thousand reasons uh, to get a second citizenship before anything else, this bull market. This government is out of control and will get worse. So does this impact you if you are a uh, non-US resident? No, it doesn't impact you. It will impact you if this Harris administration uh, will come to power and you are a US resident, then it will impact you. But in general, it's interesting to observe what is going on in the market uh, and in the world and in global politics and to understand all of this. Here, Satoshi Flipper is saying, laughing my ass off, 100 million American crypto owners just decided uh, who they are going to be voting for. And this is as a reaction to this tweet. Kamala Harris is considering Gary Gensler as treasury secretary if elected president so if you've been paying attention recently in the past few years you know that gary gensler is a chair of the sec and he hasn't been that friendly towards crypto so it seems like camilla harris is forming a anti-crypto government um, and this might also be one of the reasons why we have recently been seeing a shift uh, in the odds or, or, or the polls of the presidency. So we're seeing now uh, that for a while, uh, Harris was leading the charts for the past few days and weeks. And now we're seeing that Trump is taking the lead again. So there's a shift happening. Is this uh, leading? Does it mean that actually Donald Trump will win? No, this is just a poll. It's just a prediction. In reality, still a lot can happen. Another thing that I want to point out is that we're seeing that quite a lot of stable coins are currently being minted. So right now, 1 billion USDT has been minted at Tether Treasury. So Tether is the issuing body uh, that is basically minting USDT. Uh, and why is this important? Why am I sharing this? Well, every time uh, the market cap of stable coins increase, that's usually a sign that uh, the, the crypto market is soon going to go up because uh, stable coins are basically the liquidity of the crypto market. And when the liquidity increases, when there's more money flowing in the system, it generally means that um, the prices of assets tend to go up. Now, a very interesting news article that I also wanted to put in here is the following. Abu Dhabi proposes a framework for fiat referenced tokens. So the UAE, seems to be a jurisdiction which wants to brand itself as the Silicon Valley for crypto. So last week I posted a video where uh, I made an announcement that Dubai uh, now legalized crypto payments as salary and we're seeing more and more frameworks and laws and regulations being passed in the UAE which support innovation around crypto. Um, Tether which is the issuing body of UCT, plans to launch Dirham stablecoin uh, with UAE partners. So why is this important? Well, there's a lot of money in the UAE. Um, you've probably seen or heard the stories of the sheikhs and, and all of the business and all of the 
the millions and billions that are floating around uh, the UAE and the Middle East region, um, they need to have an easy on-ramp in order to get that money into the crypto system so that they can invest in all of the innovation and the projects that is, that is going on over there. So to me, this is a very bullish sign. And it also ties into what I said here. Stable, stable coins are the uh, liquidity of the crypto space. And the more liquidity there is, the more assets tend to go up in value. So something like this, another stable coin in a region where there's a lot of capital, uh, I think that's really beneficial for the crypto space. Then El Salvador, uh, uh, President Bukele has again made a really great move. Uh, he is educating and certifying 80,000 civil servants, so people working for this, the country of El Salvador, and he's teaching them and educating them, certifying them around Bitcoin. So he understands that if he wants to have a really innovative and leading nation, then he should provide more education. It's, it's almost rhyming. But yeah, the key is really to educate people. And the majority of the investors are just gamblers. They have got no clue what they're doing. But when you start to educate people and when they start to see the bigger picture of how Bitcoin solves a problem, how it creates real scarcity while fiat currencies are just printed out of thin air, I think that's a genius move. And I hope that more countries are going to follow a similar pro-crypto uh, stance as uh, El Salvador is doing. Now. Wrapping this up with this uh, image, ETFs have bought another 1,487 Bitcoin. BlackRock, as usual, the biggest buyer, bought around 933. ARK Invest bought around 881. Then there's two sellers, uh, Bitwise and GBTC. But overall, um, ETFs are buying more and more and more. Here, one final chart. Here you see the total Bitcoin that BlackRock is managing in its spot ETF, iBit. Um, BlackRock alone purchased 933 Bitcoin. Okay, that is huge. While only 450 Bitcoin are currently mined on a daily basis. So this tells me that the demand is much bigger than the current supply. Why are you not seeing this in the current market? Well, the market is still quite fearful. At this equilibrium price in the market, there are still people that are panic selling. And I'm talking about unexperienced retail investors that think that they have already missed the top and they want to cash out on their investments before the market goes down. But those people generally don't really tend to understand the bigger market cycle. It is not about timing the local top. It's about timing the four-year cycle top. That's where the real big money is made. So let's wrap this up, guys. A lot is happening in the market right now. Trillions are being printed, not, a, not by the US government alone, but also by other governments, Japanese government, uh, the United, Sta uh, United Kingdom. Um, we're also seeing Europe printing money. There's money printing everywhere. And governments are starting to devise these plans in order to tax the rich, in order to fill up the gaps in their balance sheet. Um, for some of you around the world, this is more relevant. If you're a US citizen right now, might be a even more critical moment for you to think about ways how you can maybe get a second citizenship, or move to another country, move your assets around. Uh, if you're not a US citizenship, if, if you're not a US citizen, um, I do believe that this trend is starting to also um, come to Europe and other uh, Western countries where governments are starting to think about increasing and gaining more control over the finances of their citizenships, uh, of their citizens. Um, so this is an important time to reconsider where you are currently at and how you are grow going to grow your wealth and protect your assets from those greedy governments. That being said, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, make sure to hit the like button. And if you want to see more similar videos like this one, so that you're always up to date about everything that's happening in the market, then make sure to subscribe to my channel as well. And in addition to that, I recommend you to check out these videos as well. Peace out. See you in the next one.